Ready, set, go. <laughs> About how many people you got on there right now? Let me take a look. We have 14. Okay, yeah, there is somebody has got feedback, uh, speaker open or something that's uh, kicking uh, noise back into the system here. This is Fred. Uh, star 6, mute yourself out if I yeah, you have that. Yeah, if you're listening on speaker, star 6 to turn off your microphone. Yeah, How and then then do star do star six to come back in whenever you want to speak. And you can listen on speakers, but just don't rebroadcast it through your mic. Okay. Basically, what we found out is we need to come in as a you. United States elector, okay? I've said this before, that basically qualifications, we have to meet the same qualifications as a House of Representatives and for the Constitution, and the age limit on that is 25. So when you turn 25, you are supposed to be a lawful elector, Okay? That's basically when you also mature bodily wise uh, out here. Uh, that's a medical understanding. And see, people think that the right to vote is 21. Okay, it's, you can vote a corporation <clears throat> or a trust at 21, and then they changed it to 18 out here, but that is to be a voter. And there's a big difference between being a voter and an elector. Okay? All the judges out here are supposed to be electors. The House of Representatives are supposed to be electors. They're supposed to meet the same qualifications as an elector. An elector is supposed to meet the same qualifications as a representative. And you can only represent another person if you are not in debt. You have to be debt-free. If you're under bondage from under bondage to somebody else, you really can't represent that because you are now uh, obligated to somebody else, and they can control you. So all these judges are not properly qualified if they are not qualified electors. And if they were qualified electors, they would have control of their accounts also. I think Rob Ryder, from what I heard from one of the guys, had said something about this, that well over 90% of the judges in this country are not qualified because the qualifications for a judge are that they were supposed to be an elector, qualified as an elector. The same thing holds true with the President of the United States. He has to be qualified as an elector. Everybody worries about his damn stinking birth certificate. Well, basically, that does come into play, but he has to be under no obligations to any other entity. And I don't think there has been one unbonded president in the last, well, at least since JFK that I know of out here. So, that's the situation we're in. All the House of Representatives, all the senators and everything else, they're under bondage. They're basically corporate employees. And then 95 or 98%, whatever, in this country are just voters. They're not electors. And basically, if you go in and you read some of the definitions... In the dictionary, you will see this. 
out of Valentine's Dictionary, elector, a person having constitutional and statutory qualifications, which entitle him to vote, including not only one who votes, but one who is qualified and yet fails to exercise the right of suffrage. Then you look at voter out of Valentine's also, one who expresses his choice of candidates or measures offered or proposed at an election by marking a ballot or indicating his choice by appropriate act upon a voting machine, one possessing the legal qualifications of an elector so as to entitle to be entitled to vote. Now, you have to know what legal is. You go into, basically, I think it's the last paragraph under legal in Anderson's Law Dictionary, and it is very telling. Legal looks more to the letter and lawful to the spirit of the law. Legal for conformity to positive rules of law is more appropriate. Lawful for accord with ethical principles. Legal imports rather that the form of the law let me see. Let me see. For forms of law are observed. Okay. Uh, let me see. Legal imports rather that the forms of law are observed. That the proceedings is correct in method. That rules prescribed have been followed. Lawful that which acts that which the act is rightful in substance that moral quality is secured. Moral quality is secured. Legal is, moreover, the antithesis of equitable and the equivalent of constructive. So all these courts, these judges... They're acting as legal judges. They're not lawful judges. And basically the actions that are going on in court are of a constructive nature. They are co trying to construct a case against you. You have to come in and take their construction permit away from them. You send them packing. Now, if they've already started digging on the construction site, they have to return that construction site back to its original condition. Because if you go up and you read restitution in intergram, okay, restitution without the N on the end of it, in Intergum, Graham, restoration to the original unbroken state or condition. In civil law, placing a party in the position he occupied before he was introduced to enter into a contract by reason of fraud, force, fear, mistake, or incapacity. That's in civil law. In maritime law, putting a vessel into the condition it was in before it was putting a vessel into the condition it was in before a collision. Now they arrest you. Basically, they have to restore 
back to you the harm that has been caused. They impound your vehicle. That is a vessel. They have placed it in bondage. You have to pay to get it out. You have to be restored for the deprivation of the usage of that vessel and also for the impound fees of that incarceration before the collision, before the arrest of that vehicle. Dave. Okay. Now, you go into Ballantyne's Dictionary and also look up what it says about votes cast at an election. It says, number of voters voting. In the absence of a certification of the number of electors voting, the court must presume that the highest number of votes cast for candidates for any office represents the number of electors voting. It's that phrase right there tells you one hell of a lot. See, an elector is the preferred shareholder. Mm -hmm. The voters are the common shareholders. If the preferred shareholders vote one way, it don't make a hill of beans what the common shareholders vote. It's going to go in favor of the preferred shareholders. Okay? They're the ones that count because they're the ones that are the true creditors. The voters are basically just debtors, wannabe. Now, you have a chance out here under electo est cretos, E-L-E-C-T-I-O-E-S-T, creditors, with an I-S on the end of creditors. The creditor has his election. And then the same thing for a debtor. The debtor has his election. And basically everybody out here has been voting to be a debtor by utilizing their contracts or their votes when you sign a contract. You're voting. Mm. You basically go and get a uh, register to vote with the state, you are basically doing an absentee ballot. You are handing your vote over to that debtor representative. And see, there's very few in that state senate, house senate, uh, Uh, House of Representatives at the state level or at the federal level that are not debtors. They're all operating under a Social Security number and basically they're a debtor. And they get kickbacks because now they're corporate employees just like Enron. Basically, they siphon off the funds and then hand it off to either the employees or to the management. The United States is nothing more than a trust. That is the trust. But it's a bankrupt trust. And we're supposed to be the electors standing over them. The highest government official in America is not the president. The highest government official is 
the United States elector. He is the one that has the power to put the president in office. He is also the one that has the power to take the president out. Mm. How many electors does it take to remove somebody from their trust office? The answer is two. It's right in the Constitution. Mm. Article 3, Section 3. By two, you can impeach for treason of office. You go in the court. You always take a backup elector with you if you ever get in there as an elector. You have them sit in the peanut gallery, and then basically you make your motion you ask the judge, are you qualified? You don't care whether he's got a bond or anything like that. Are you qualified to be a judge per the law? They have to be an elector. If they are not, they are fraudulently trying to lawfully appear to be a judge, giving the false appearance of being a judge. You make your motion, I vote to basically impeach you for treason of office. And basically you are also in violation of the law. Violation of the law. The failure to observe the law whenever by act of commission or omission. In its ordinary sense, the expression includes the violation of a positive law, whether the law is a civil or a criminal law. And see, they're in violation of the constitutional laws of the land, of the state constitution, of the national constitution. All judges at the national level are supposed to be electors. They were supposed to be at least 25 years of age and they were supposed to claim their accounts. They were supposed to be debt-free, under no bondage. And then in a court, in all these actions that they're operating in, they are nothing but a referee. They are there just like at a tennis match. This is the easiest one to compare it to because it's normally one player against the other side. You have the ball. You drop the ball, and now the ball goes over to the other side. But if you stand in as an elector, What you cast as a vote counts. You just scored an ace on them. You keep the vote from the other side because vote is nothing but the word will. It is your will. But in the corporate world, They cannot have a will. So that's why they turned around and changed it over to vote. The vampire scenario. The. 
You hand it over to them, and basically they will vote against you every time. Because they're there to make a profit for the corporation or for the trust. But if you come in and you vote in there and you stand in as a U.S. elector, you have them right there at your mercy. They have to comply with your will, your vote. So that's what a vote is all about. It's your will. And see, they can't have a will in a corporation. So what we need to do is we need to come in and we have to do a voting ballot or uh as the true creditor here, and we cast our vote, and that's the new document that I had Tom put up there yesterday, okay, and I sent mine in to uh, my chief judge. Now, if that chief judge is not qualified, uh, we should say something like this. Note. If you are unable to comply with the validation of my U.S. U.S. dot elector voting ballot because of being lawfully unqualified, you are directed to forward it to a senior judge that is constitutionally and statutorily qualified as a U.S. dot elector debt free of bondage as required by the Constitution laws of this nation. Why do these courts not recognize the Constitution? Because they're operating in lawful or legal sense, in the constructive sense. They take bits and pieces of whatever they want to try and build their building block. And they try and build a building around you to fence you in. That's what they're trying to build. And like I said, you have to come in and vote to remove their permit. You vote them out of existence. This is really pretty simple when you really get down to it, okay? And then also, when you look at uh, being a elector, well, you go on down through the dictionary and basically... One of the next words you'll come to after elect is electricity. Oh, we got an elector. Well, that must be almost like a conductor in electricity. Well, if we're the key elector, we came from the land, we're going back to the land, what conductor are we? We are the ground. Everything has to go through ground or back to ground. What color is the ground wire? Green. Most cases, it's green. Now, you can prove what I'm talking about here by going out and popping the hood on your car and disconnecting the ground wire off the battery. Now, try and start that car. It won't 
run. Now you know why this country is not operating the way it should. It's because there is not enough grounds out here to make it function properly. Mm. They're all going around in a circle trying to find where the ground is at. That's the whole scenario, is that we have to come in. We came from the ground. We are going back to the ground. So we are a grounding rod or the grounding wire. We have to make the connection to the circuit. This is what Neil did in the movie Matrix. How did he destroy Mr. Smith? He took him to ground. He grounded him out. Poof, he was gone. That's what we have to do. Now, I heard somebody say something about $25,000 there on that letter that I put in. My request, why'd they go with that? Well, I just wanted some temporary funds that if they couldn't complete that, basically all I was doing was I want $25,000. I want to start grounding some of this debt money. Take that debt money and ground it out. Put it into something of substantial usage. Something that came from the ground in return. A vehicle. Or whatever. But we've grounded out that much debt. That bad Mr. Smith. We killed one of them off. And anyway, it was basically coming out of what I have the right to ground out as a uh, U.S., United States uh, elector and trustee over the U.S. corporate trust. I have two voting trust certificates. One is my certificate of live birth. The other is my DD-214 form. Those are voting trust certificates, but you have to be a U.S. elector, a United States of America elector. You can also go into an Oxford uh, Universal Dictionary and look up the word elect. And what it says, one of God's chosen. But it doesn't stop there. It says chosen by God. The follow-up is for eternal life. Your eternal life. And you were chosen to be one of the elect here in this country when you turn 25. Now, there is one girl in the group that basically has a boy that is around 23. He is up on charges of uh, identity theft. The identity theft that basically has been perpetrated, or that he perpetrated, was 
the usage of E-L in front of his name. He got that from a misunderstanding of what the usage of E-L was for. This came from a lot of the Moors out there that have uh, are using E-L in front of their name. Well, as long as you're over the age of 25, you can use E-L in front of your name. Because E-L is really standing for elector. Just like Mr. You can validate that because that is the charge that the U.S. Justice Department is charging him with. He's not qualified yet to use E.L. in front of his name. I mean, basically, that is a good one. I mean, sorry for the kid right now, but basically... Uh, he can come in and apologize and get out of this one now that he knows what, and his mother knows what's going on here in the process. And she could take over as coming in as a elector in the process and vote in his behalf as an elector. And basically, if the judge uh, tries to blow past them, basically, uh, you can uh, turn around and she can vote to impeach that guy. She just better have another elector in the peanut gallery so that they can stand up and say, I second that motion and I also vote to impeach you. Mm-hmm. Now you've got two voting for impeachment per the Constitution, right there in open court. See, people think they know what the Constitution says, but they don't really understand it. That is our controlling document over the corporate trust. We have the power. And then when basically we get little tidbits like this coming from the Justice Department stating that basically the usage of EL is very key in identity theft, they just told us one hell of a lot. Instead of using Mr. when you sign something, you sign E-L. I should have signed my voting ballots yesterday when I sent them out as L. Patrick, semicolon, divine. There's also a movie out that validates this same action. It was called El Cid with Charlton Heston taking place back around 1,000 years ago in Spain. El Cid was one of the elect. That's why the L was in front of his name, Sid. Because he was one of the elect. And he didn't try and take over the kingship. They wanted him to, but no. He wanted to stay right where he's at, as the elect. Because he knew he could do better uh, justice from that point that he was in. So, basically, you're going to be L whatever. 
Now, when you get out and basically you follow what is required per the Bible and everything, you're going to become an elf. And basically, what color do elves wear? Green. Green. You don't have to go and get the green tights and the uh, uh, green jacket and the green hat and all that. But basically, uh, like uh, Tim, uh, the tool man, in that one movie about the elf uh, out there. But, yeah, you'll be an elf. And then you'll be able to help the homeless, the widows, the handicapped. As an elf, handing out the presents. So stand by to become an elf. And you'll be grounding things all over the place. But that's what the whole gist of this is, okay? is that we are a U dot S dot, a United States, and that United States stands for the the United States of America. Okay? In this regard, U.S. would be just a corporate uh, elector or whatever, a corporate employee a trust employee. And see, that's what they put our stuff into, being a debtor, and then they try and classify us, and they get us into operating under all false presumptions. Too many people go out here and shoot their damn mouth off. I've said this before. You don't fully understand things, then you make a simple statement and shut the hell up. Because they will let you talk yourself right into your own grave. And that's what 90% of the people do. You keep running off the mouth thinking that you know something that you really don't know everything about. You don't know what the words fully mean. And then they turn around and use them against you. You don't know the rules of the game. They use those against you too. You can't dribble, double dribble in this game. That's one of their rules. When I went to the Court of International Trade, well, this doesn't comply with the rules. This doesn't comply with the rules. Well, basically, I didn't see it at that time, but basically, I was in the wrong place. That court was basically a legal court. It was not a lawful court. A lawful court basically doesn't have all those bullshit rules. They deal in equity. And see, that's why we, when we get out as an elect, get this recognized. Now, if your chief judge does not have the qualifications, like I said, He is to forward it to a senior judge. Or if uh, you have problems, like one of the girls was having, trying to get it to the chief judge, you go to the next court level above that, the circuit court. The Supreme Court judge or justice over that circuit court. Or to the Court of Appeals. 
or you send it directly to a senior judge because most of these senior judges are sitting there and they've already claimed their accounts and they're not on the payroll. They're there for life. But they like their job. And they're waiting for somebody to show up and stand in as a United States elector for the Constitution. Now, I think I've covered just about everything there is. Uh, we can go over the ballot, okay, and uh, uh, look at it, okay? The voting trust, U.S. dot elector, trustee is of age. You're over the age of 25, okay? If you're doing something under the age of 25, then you are just a voter. And you would go into court or whatever and cast your vote as an A-E-L. Not an E-L, but an A-E-L. An apprentice elector. Because you're not of age yet to be a constitutional elector. You have to be the sole inherent owner of your voting trust certificate as the bailor, creditor, and grantor. But if you're over the age of 25, then you can continue. You vote, and the items that I have are continue allowing U.S. bank rupt to usage of the voting trust. Yes or no? Straight up and down. Now, everybody take out a pencil and put a check mark on a piece of paper. And I can guarantee this one, that there is no one in the opposite direction. You made a V with a right-hand handle. That is what that check mark is. That's saying, I vote to the right That means you are validating as a lawful vote when you do a check mark. Even in accounting, you go through and you do a checklist. You are voting to the right saying, I concur that this is correct. I have never seen anybody vote to the left with a check mark that has a left-handed handle. See, these are little things that basically people never think about. Never open their mind to ask the question, why is it like that? You have to start thinking outside the box. And they have done a good job of boxing us in. Okay? We get rid of our bankrupt that we have out there, our quasi-U.S. bankrupt person, our fictional person. We execute them. We vote for that, for the execution. 
then we terminate and liquidate all the following bankrupt Bailey uh, debtor bailments that we handed over to our U.S. bankrupt. We vote to terminate all of those bailments and liquidate them and have in the process all of those funds have to come back to you because you're the bay lore. You can go into the bankruptcy laws of 1938 and 1976. And this is where I found about this voting trust. But what I started off looking for in those bankruptcy uh, acts was I was looking for the word bail, B-A-I-L. The 1938 Bankruptcy uh, Act had 100 pages, right at 100 pages. The one for 76, I think it was 120 or 30, I can't remember which, which it was. But anyway, in both of them, the word bail only came up three times. And it was referencing bailiff. Not bailey, not bailment, not bailor, just bailiff. Well, if you have a bailiff, there has to be a bailment. And if there's a bailment, there has to be a bailey and a bailor. But they didn't put it in there. They hid it away. Well, how did they do that? They did it by putting in, and basically the U.S. trustees can vote for anything on there except a voting trust certificate. They cannot come right out and vote that. The only way that they can get the right to vote that is if you refuse to vote it. Like in bankruptcy. The U.S. trustee comes in and basically he takes your vote and then determines whether you're going to get something. And then they put stipulations on bankruptcy saying, hey, you can't do this, you can't do that. Student loans, off the books. You can't take those through the bankruptcy. Well, yes, you can. But you have to do it as the bailor. You have to be the one to do the voting and not give it over to the bankruptcy trustee. But you could have done this all beforehand by settling the item because it was your signature that was on there as basically the creditor. Mm -hmm. And after three years, that thing is fully paid for. All you have to do is come in and order the set-off against that. But you have to come in in the right capacity. As the bailor, or after you become the elector, Now you can ground anything out that is associated with you. Then you can also, after you're out like that, then you can turn around and come in and vote for somebody else if they're basically incompetent. You step in as basically uh, the attorney or whatever that they want to call you, 
uh, I'm trying to think of the word in uh, corporate voting out there that basically uh, you uh, hand your voting rights over to somebody else. Proxy? Yeah, proxy vote, okay? So you're coming in under proxy that they've given you the right to vote their share, their vote, because they don't understand the system. So you can vote for them. And you're going to vote the right way. Not the way the prosecutor. So you keep the vote out of the prosecutor's hands because if it gets over to the prosecutor, it's like you're you're calling in your, your backup quarterback because he can throw the deep pass. Let him do it. He's got the arm for it. Let him go the rest of the distance. Call on help when you need it. Okay? But sit down and break out the damn dictionaries. I've told you to do this before. And don't go in there and argue with these people. Trying to show how much damn shit you think you know. Because they will sit there and just, oh yeah, that sounds good, that sounds good. And basically, uh, you just make your statement and get the hell out. Okay? Drop it off. See what happens. If it don't operate, then you know that we have to go somewhere else. You have to keep looking for the hole in the fence to make your escape. And that's essentially what we've done. Now, several of us are already ahead of the game because... Uh, after you terminate and liquidate all those other bailments, then you have to transfer the voting trust certificates and assets as bailments. You have to remove them from the DT Seeding Company depository over to your protected foreign grantor trust U.S. Treasury. Department deposit carry account. And that would be under your 98 or 90 or whatever number you have that they called a foreign grant or trust. You're sending this into the judge, your voting ballot, for him to do a final vote counting and validation. He is also at the same time going to validate that you are a U.S. United States U dot S dot United States elector. Now you have the validation from a court recognizing you as such. Now that state attorney general, that state secretary of state, have to give you your proper identification by placing you upon the green sheet, giving you your green status, a green identification card, and a green passport. The clerk of the court will be the one that will write up the writs of restitution and the writs of execution based upon the judgment of this judge doing the final vote and validation. We're supposed 
supposed to be this prince of the sovereign, the nation, the elect. We don't need to do the paperwork. I don't think you ever saw Neil do any paperwork in the movie Matrix. But yet he was the one that basically saved everybody. So I'm going to stop doing all this paperwork for you guys. This is the final paperwork. This is it. And you look this over, and then basically if you don't get recognition from the place that it went, but like I said, you put that one statement in there, and I'll re-say this again so you can listen to the audio and write it down. Judicial qualifications. Note, if you are unable to comply with the validation of my U.S. elector voting ballot because of being lawfully unqualified, you are directed to forward it to a senior judge that is constitutionally and statutorily qualified as a U.S. elector, debt-free of bondage as required by the Constitution laws of this nation. Put them on notice that basically you know that if they're unable, that they're also unqualified as a judge. And that basically that you could come after them and basically do a vote of impeachment against them at any point in time. All you need is a second person. By two, you can take anybody out of an office. Okay? It only takes two votes to bring somebody out of an office. I don't know what that was about. Okay. I like I said, yeah. it takes just two to bring somebody out of an office. It takes quite a few to get them in there, but it's very simple to get them out of office. Now that we know the game. But we have to be standing as a U.S. elector. You really want to shake them up? Go and put a license plate on your vehicle. Elector. (laughs) In all capital letters. Above that, put little... U, or a capital U, but smaller, U dot, S dot, above that. Because basically, they arrest you, you're going to vote yourself right out of that court charge. (laughs) And basically, you're going to vote to be uh, compensated for the harm. That's what we were missing in court, is coming in as an elector, as a U.S. elector, but we had to put our ballot out there, removing, ordering the removal of being classified as a debtor. You have, as an elector, you have the right of choice, free choice, free will. 
And you can either be a debtor or a creditor. One that basically is a grounding rod or one that just floats around in the circuit, bouncing off all the damn uh, relays and resistors and everything else that are out there. Capacitors and everything else getting held in captivity for a while until basically you get released. This whole thing is nothing but a major electrical circuit board. That's why it was called the Matrix. But to make the thing function properly, we need more grounding rods out here to start dissipating all of this false stuff. Get rid of these Mr. Smiths out here. We take them the ground and they disappear. Okay, I think I covered just about everything that uh, I tried to talk, talk to several people over the last uh, day, day and a half here on this stuff. So, uh, uh, I guess uh, we'll go ahead and open it up to uh, uh, questions. I'm going to hop my pickup driver with my mom so that I'll listen and uh <clears throat> Try and answer as I drive. So go ahead and open it up, Tom. Okay. I have a question. Okay. Um, we're, I've been uh, processing these documents for um, myself and my daughter, too, and she's 23. So she can't officially sign out of the system until she's 25? No, you would have to come in and basically as a guardian, okay, uh-huh. uh, over uh, until she turns the age of 25. She's still in an apprenticeship. Okay. And so for my son, who's 14, I should list his birth certificate and all his documents on my document, right? Well, I would get yourself out first. You need to get your standing first, okay? All right. Then okay. you can come in as... Uh, a qualified elector at that point in time, and then you'll have a better standing in the situation. Okay. See, that's the same way about trying to go after uh, a death certificate, okay, and uh, for a uh, father or mother or whatever, you get yourself out. You need to get yourself in the proper standing first before you even think about going after something like that. Right. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Thanks, Pat. Yep. I have a question. Okay. Uh, What's the difference with the EL in front of the name or the back of the name? Well... Basically, I don't think it was Sid L. I think it was L. Sid in the movie. Okay. You want your title. You want your title out front. Okay, King Arthur. Okay, it wasn't Arthur King. President Johnson. It's not Johnson president. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Okay, see, simple things. Think simple. Be a simple-minded person. Simple-minded person is a common-sense person, really. Okay? I'm not trying to belittle you or anything like that. I'm just trying to get you to think in a different capacity because basically you've been taught all wrong all your life. Amen. Yep. That's true. Okay. 
Patrick, I have a question. Okay. I I had my writs all ready to go in. Do these papers supersede um, the writs, or do I send them in anyways? No. Just put them aside, okay? Okay. Get that ballot in. Okay. Okay. Now, when you send the ballot in, you send it in by certified mail. Okay. Okay. Using a green certified mail label, we want green. Mm-hmm. Okay. You don't send it in overnight express or registered mail. Okay. Both of those two items have a nine-digit number. Both of those two items, those nine-digit numbers are QCIP numbers. The post office will go and initiate a $25,000 insurance policy, bond policy, against those numbers when you use them, when they go into the cash register, where a certified mail label will not. Hmm. You uh, put a green card, another green item, a green card with it. And I would mark uh, that uh, restricted delivery box on there. It's going to cost you about another five bucks or so for that. Okay? Okay. And then I would also print your ballot out on green paper. Ah, good idea. Yeah, you want everything in the green. You want to show them that you are the grounding rod and that you have, that you're Irish also. (laughs) You're going to be wearing the green. Good idea. You know, they, they, my friends, I have friends who are Irish, and some of them call themselves the black Irish. Well, like I told way. Bill, okay, I'm, gonna be bad. <laughs> I'm Irish, and I told Bill, I said, you know what the difference between an Irishman and a uh, black man is? No, no. Tell me. Irishman is just a black man pulled inside out. <laughs> oh, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, basically when the Irish came over to this country the vast majority of them were indentured servants they were slaves also but they gave them a little higher classification indentured servants it's still a slave but it's just a little fancier, a little more uh, uh, Puritan name for the damn thing, I guess, is what you want to say. Puritanic name or whatever. See, people don't know all the history about this country. Don't know any. Yeah. Well, because everything we were told was lies. That's yeah, most of, it, most of it isn't written. No, yeah, it's not going to be written. That's the problem. They don't want it written. And the stuff that was, they've pulled off the shelves. <laughs> yeah, they've hidden it away. Just like uh, basically all these museums and everything. I mean... Yeah, there's for history, but basically you can take a bunch of pictures and you can record that, but put all of the gold and everything back in the circulation for the people, okay? You don't need to have it sitting uh, in a damn stinking museum. That's nothing more than basically still being in the Pharaoh's crypt. It was depriving, and the pharaohs, all they were doing when they buried all that gold with them was to deprive the people of that monetary, that asset. 
that exchangement because it's minerals that came from the land. It belongs to the people that are living, not to some dead shithead. <laughs> that's why they have grave robbers, right? What? Well, that's only that basically see the grave robbers. Basically, they're trying to do something right. But it's the other people that are claiming that they're the ones that are doing it wrong. No. The damn Smithsonian Institute and stuff like that, they're the ones that are really the true grave robbers. Yes, indeed. Yeah. Because yeah, they're going to walk it away from the people, too. Well, and there's and a see, lot there of are stuff so that... many assets, there are so many properties of gold other than being used as a currency that could have helped this country and the whole world out here. You take gold, Catherine? and it's a noble metal, and you take gold through the spectrum, heat processing spectrum of light in the different processes, and you break it down. It has different properties in each one of the different light spectrums because each light spectrum is a different harmonic. So you cause a different harmonic in that noble metal, and they see it will generate a different property. And some foods have gold and silver in it too. Also makeup. Yeah. That's what Cleopatra used to have. Plutonium or uh, platinum, rubidium, uh, silver, gold, and uh, I forget what the other, there's a couple others I think. Yeah, you can get a... Rhodium. Uh, yeah. Indium. Monatomic superconductors. Yeah. And see, but they get them to operate in their different harmonic structures. And see, that's all that this is all about, is harmonics. And then the body operates on DC. Okay? We're not set up for AC. And that's why in this country, a lot of the diseases and everything are really because of all the AC circuits in your house. Okay. Any other questions about this other stuff? <laughs> that was okay. a little digression. Sorry about that. I have a question. So uh, can the uh, the women use the uh, L in front of their name also if they're yes. over 25? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. You're an elect. And see, it's one of... God's chosen, chosen by God, chosen by your spirit to live for your eternal life, the lifetime that you're going to live. That's your eternal life. And that's right in Oxford Universal Dictionary, 1933. Eternal life, E-L, also. Yeah, see, you have eternal life where a corporate employee and everything doesn't. They can disappear tomorrow. Well, um, the archangels have their names like uh, Raphael, Michael. Well, let's don't worry about the angels right now. Let's worry (laughs) about trying to just be an elector here, okay? Okay? (laughs) Okay? You can try that the next okay. flight time. Next cycle. Okay? Well, i got about 40 years left here. <laughs> no, you've got probably a few more, okay? Like I've tried to explain to people, this is just one of the houses that you have to live in. 
and this is Pisces, okay, that we're in right now. There's 12 grades of school. You didn't just live in kindergarten, okay, or first grade. You had to go to the next grade, and you were supposed to keep adding on as you went up the ladder until you got through all 12 grades and graduated. So that's the way the game's played. Like I said, you have to know the rules of the game. So it's probably a good idea to start signing your name instead of Mrs. You put L in front of your name. Yeah, E-L. Enlighten. Okay. L. Joan. Semicolon. Smith. So you just are now known as L. Joan. I'm L. Patrick. Sort of like L. Sid. (laughs) So it's L, then the first name, then semicolon, then the last name. Yeah. (laughs) Okay. I like being L. Talon. And then basically you can do your license plate and try that and say, hey, go ahead and charge me. Basically, I'll vote the damn charge away. I mean, the U.S. senators and stuff like that, that in some cases, I think that's all they have on their damn uh, license plate is U.S.Senator. Basically, they're exempt in some of those regards when they're driving that senator's vehicle. We'll see if you are, and you're the highest government official in the country as a U.S. elector. You're even higher than the president. Because who elects the president? The electors. Except for right now when they don't have enough electors and basically it just gives the appearance that they're putting a uh, voter in there to replace the elector acting as in that capacity because they don't have enough electors to come in and boot that damn little voter out. That's why it's the electoral vote. Yes, it's supposed to be out by electors. Uh Aha moment. Wow. Yeah, by the preferred shareholders. Not by the little debtor voters. But see, there aren't enough preferred shareholders in this country standing up. So, Patrick, I have a question. Yeah. I was finally able to get my 98 number today. I did it under a, you know, different name trust as you um, advised. Or get it, okay? Don't oh, try. Don't. Yeah, if you can't get it, don't worry about it, okay? Okay, I got it. Vote in, you get this vote in, and basically uh, when you get your vote in, that will be one of the processes that you want uh, the Treasury when they bring your trust out of the DTC, Seed and Company, that they need to place it into the U.S. depository and they need to have a uh, foreign grant or trust account set up for you. Okay. Okay? Okay. Now, what, a couple other questions for you. A copy of my original birth certificate? Should I make a photocopy of the one I have, or do I should I order another yes, one? Yes, you send them? copies in. You don't send okay. the originals in. Okay. Even for the certificate of live birth, you just send a copy in. Say, hey, okay. you come and see me if you want to see the copy or the uh, raised sealed one. I've got it sitting here. Okay. Bring 25000 with you. I need some extra cash. 
Now, a lot okay. of people don't realize that that federal courthouse is nothing but a federal bank. It is. Yes. They have walk-in vaults in those places. I know. Especially in the bankruptcy clerk of the court's office. They have a walk-in vault there. What the hell do they have a walk-in vault for? How many times have you ever gone to a post office that's not a brand new one that basically been out there for uh, years prior to, say, the 1960s? You go in there, and basically what do they have? They have a walk-in vault. Why do they have a walk-in vault? Because basically the post office were the people's banks at one point in time. Now all they hold in those vaults is stamps. And most people don't think of stamps as real money, but they are. Okay. And then on this document says, and we just went over this. It says issue a U.S. green elector status ID and passport or a green card. When people come here who are not citizens, if you will, and they come to work, they get a green card. Is that something similar? Basically, they're putting them in a different status, okay, to try to keep you uh, from understanding what they're coming over here, okay? See, they're coming over here not as a debtor yet. Mhm. Okay. Then they turn around and try and get them because, see, their assets are still over. They haven't been naturalized to move their assets over here as a bailment. When they get mm-hmm. naturalized, then basically their assets are transferred over or basically they are giving a bailment from this country. That's why the then card they, is green. Then they take the green card away from them, don't they? Right. Yeah. And see, okay. you ask a question that really, why were you even asking that question? Are you on a green <laughs> no. card? Are you on no. a green card? <laughs> no. Why are I you worrying don't. about something like that? I'm you not women, worried. I've... you wor- women worry about the simplest, stupidest things at times. I'm trying to help you get one thing done, and you come up with something completely <laughs> off the wall and try. <laughs> I know. And, yeah, come on. Okay, I know. It was I'm off trying the to get you to think like a guy for a change. Okay. <laughs> you know, a lot of the guys don't think like you do either. I know. They've been <laughs> they've been feminized too damn much and they're going off the deep end to the wrong <laughs> side of the track. Oh dear. Okay, so my, this is hopefully my last question of the day. You're saying okay. ignore everything else for now and just concentrate on the the voter status, correct? Yes. The elector status. Yeah. You're qualified, aren't you? As an Absolutely. Elector. Okay. I am. Go in and read the Constitution. Read what it says about that the president has to be a qualified elector. And basically, what is a qualified elector? One who basically meets the same qualifications as a House of Representatives, which means they have to be 25 years of age. And anybody that represents another person cannot be in debt to somebody else because they would not be able to give a proper representation. Free, unbonded representation to that other person that's putting them in position. So we really don't have any lawful representatives out there in Washington, D.C., because they're all in bondage. 
<laughs> That's why we get all these damn nip, shitty uh, codes and everything else. And see, they can't apply those codes to an elector. Because you can't go after the one who is in charge, the creator. And basically, the nation was created by the electors. That is the we, the people, that are the real key holders of America. Okay, any more questions? I strongly recommend you listen to this tape at least three or four times before you jump into this so that you have a good understanding. You also go in and look up all the different words that I tried to go over. Voter, elector, uh, all the items that deal with vote in there. Okay? Read them all. Do a comparison between more than just one dictionary. See what the differences are and how, which dictionary these guys try and use in court. Mm. And what the words that they're trying to use in court against you and the definitions there. You have to be smarter than the average there. Okay? And they they will sit there and they will try and get you into anything. Try and get you to go out of bounds so that they can get your vote away from you. They will try and call for a shrink of vow in some regards. You have to vote and say, no, I do not consent to that. I veto. If you have the right to vote, you have the right to veto any of their statute, their codes of law, or any of their additional requirements out of the books, off the table. They're trying to change the rules of the game on you. But you have to know what the rules of the game are when you go in there. And you should never really get in there anymore now when you can come in and vote everything off the table anyway. Well, Patrick, uh, this uh, ballot replaces the case. We no longer have to submit the case. And uh, no. they're going to they're going to do the rich, not us. Right. Okay. Now, yeah, I'm, basically, I'm not... you may they work for us. Okay. Yeah. Now we come in as the elector. Okay. This is what the problem was. Why did they charge us? Because we were coming in as a debtor. But if you come in as the elector, they can't charge you for something that they have to give. To the elect. And you're one of the elect now. Okay. Okay. Now, I, I, yes. I, I noticed you took out the uh, uh, wording about sending in uh, certificates later. Is this a one-shot deal or we just go for the our elector status first and then submit more documents later? When they come and see you, then you can hand the additional items over. Okay. If you per, if you miss something on, uh, don't list something. Don't worry about it. Okay. Yeah, I've got to search my files for some things, but okay, that's that. Well, basically, that's sit down and think about it. But get this thing in. Get the key documents in. Okay. Good. Okay. That, that answers what I want. And now, your, your old marriage license and stuff like that. Basically, you can pull those down and uh, 
take your time and say, oh, here, I've got this too. Uh, you might check and see if there's any assets still hanging on this. Uh, bankruptcy case or something. Basically, in a lot of cases, uh, like bankruptcy, will stay open for about 10 years. Yes. I'm sure mine is. Okay. Now, yeah, uh, there's, yeah, they're still drawing against that, okay, sure. in the court. So sure. basically you can say, well, I had this. But in most cases, that's why we're calling in on the Secret Service to do the accounts rendered. Right. If I and found everything you... had to be going through the Social Security account. That was basically the transmitting utility to draw against your uh, voting trust account. No. Was that one document right there, that Social Security number? You had When you got registered to vote, you had to give them your Social Security number. When you got your driver's license, you had to give them your Social Security number. When you registered your vehicle, when you registered your house, you had to give them your Social Security number. When you opened up a bank account, you had to give them your Social Security number. Mm-hmm. That's right. That is the transmitting utility number in the process. Mm-hmm. So when you close that down, basically, and they do an account rendering of that Social Security number, they will know what all other accounts are attached to that. Ah, uh, good. Okay. I was That's what the AKA. They have the books. You don't have the books. They have them. Yes. Right, and the right. Secret Service is the one that is basically controlling that whole system, and it's known as the Enterprise Financial Management System. Okay, so I don't have to worry about finding other documents. So I'll find them. No. Just get what you've got, okay? Right, okay. Now, you, you also mentioned Elector's personal identification. That's not the birth certificate or the hospital records because you've already mentioned those. No. I went down several years ago, and I got a private set of fingerprints and also a, uh identification. They took my picture and put my right hand my left hand fingerprints on a card. So basically I have a private uh, identification card without my Social Security number on it. Okay. I told people about this a couple of years ago. Okay. Okay, I, I wondered whether that was it. It's a little bit of a problem for me because I only have police or the sheriffs are 30 miles away. If you don't have it, forget it. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'll go down to the police and see if they'll do it. You okay, don't so need gonna... it. Okay. okay. There are two blocks I away. Did, I did it. Uh, you guys, please, please. Okay? This is a work in progress. Okay? Yes. You have to do it yourself. I only gave you a template. This is not the gospel. I am not Peter. I am not James. I'm not Mark. I'm not Luke. I'm not John. Okay? I'm not writing no damn stinking gospels. <laughs> okay? Okay, gotcha. Right, we, you guys, we got to use our logic. It's just like I asked the stupid question a few days ago with Patrick. I go, hey, I don't have a certificate of live birth, but I've got a notification of birth registration. He goes, use it. That's what you use. You use what you have. You don't freak out about anything. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so and, someone posted in the um, yeah in the Skype group the other day that Gary had talked with the Secret Service, and it seems that we're on the right path. Do we know what kind of contact he had with the Secret Service? Was it a friendly visit, or? <laughs> I don't know whether he's on the call tonight or not. Okay. No, I don't. I don't see him. Okay. No. The the key thing here from the call tonight was the one item about the identity theft. That's the biggest damn thing you have tonight. Mhm. If the Justice Department is recognizing E L as basically being the elector in the process and that they're charging somebody that's 23 that put that in front of his name as uh, using identity theft, 
that is so monumental right there that the Justice Department recognizes it. So basically, now you've got the Justice Department recognizing that if you're an elector and you meet all the qualifications, you're home free. That's a huge clue. L. Patrick, I have a question. Yeah. So, um, since I'm over 25, way over 25, I can start using my name L. Peter. Yes. And then semicolon merit. Yes. Or, or whatever my first and middle name is. Okay. And I'm not going to get um, visited if I start signing all my checks and, you know, when no, I purchase no. stuff in the store. <laughs> You don't just, do that there, okay? Yeah, you just do it on this document. If you're still in the commercial debtor system, you're not an L, okay? It's only for this. Yes, and basically when you come out, you don't use any commercial transactions. You stay the hell away from the devil, okay? The bankers. The money changers. <laughs> well, what am I going to do? I, can't, I need a debit card. I need this. I need that. No, I didn't say that. You need to listen to the audios that I've tried to explain how this monetary system really works. There will be other means, basically, that we can do. You turn around now as a U.S. elector, and you turn around, you send the bill into the Treasury Department and order them to set it off. You're going to take that much asset out of a debt bank and take it to ground. Yeah, we all need to listen to these tapes a couple times or a few times and then take a big nap and and become a new person. <laughs> you said it. You just said it. You gotta download, you gotta delete all this stuff we have in our head. I hear you. Oh. But we'll listen to his tapes like especially the last month or the last three weeks and then just get it solid in your head and and when it, it like I, I'm not joking about taking a nap because that's how your mind erases itself. Yeah. Well, basically, this is the biggest thing right here. You're yeah. finding that in the bankruptcy deal about the voting trust and then about being the elector uh, in the process and now even getting a confirmation from uh, the Justice Department about the usage of the EL mm -hmm. in the process. Little blessings, little uh, road markers. Yeah. yeah. Little tidbits that basically most people overlook and don't see what's going on. Yeah, this is a very packed call. It's great. And then read the documents. Understand them. You don't understand a word, look it up. But look it up in more than one dictionary. And the two that I strongly recommend is basically... Anderson's and Ballantyne's, that you can compare them to Bouvier's and uh, Black's, and then also you should try and use a civil dictionary, like either an old uh, Webster's or the Oxford Universal Dictionary. And you can find some of those at an old bookstore. And basically, in most cases, they will be pretty damn cheap because nobody wants to read the damn dictionaries. <laughs> and that's really where the law is because basically it's all in the words. 
Um, you don't and, understand the words, you will never understand anything else. A good place to get books is uh, cheapest Abe, A-B-E books, youth books. Goodwill, Salvation Army. Thrift stores. Yeah, thrift stores, basically. Uh, they have book bins. People die every day. And basically, uh, a lot of the younger people basically just call off and take it all down to Goodwill. Okay, anything else? Okay, Tom, go ahead and call him tonight. Okay, thank you, Phil. So okay. Patrick. Thank you, Patrick. Talk to you guys later. Okay, good night. Okay. How many how many were on the call here, Tom? Uh, I think uh I think twenty five when we checked. Well it's eighteen now, but we were up to twenty five. Okay. Thank you. Well, that's a yeah. sad state of affairs. I mean basically uh this is the answer that everybody's been looking for and basically uh, you guys need to pa- get the board passed out about this. Okay? Right. You guys need to do your job, too. Yes. <laughs> we, okay. We, yeah, we need to get out, and once, once I understand how how exactly it works, I have plenty of people I'm going to be helping. Yeah, well, get, get the audio here? out to them. Get the audio out to them, if nothing else, okay? Right. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Uh, this is George. Hey, Patrick, <clears throat> I... I Oh, you remember my home thing? Uh, they, um, they condemned my home. Well, I went in there, and uh, that guy that's been um, counterfeiting laws out of his head, <clears throat> I caused him to uh, blow a fuse in front of all of his peers, man. It, it was so cool. I'm off. Uh, I can do whatever I want now. I'm king of the castle. <clears throat> it felt so good to know who, who I am. Yeah, if you come in as the U.S. elector and basically uh, say that you are uh, qualified, you are a qualified U.S. elector per the Constitution and uh, the statutory laws, and that you are not a legalese uh, fiction. Yep. And that I vote, and here is my vote. And see, you now cast your vote as a preferred shareholder in the process, in the corporate structure. And basically, the preferred shareholders do not come over the corporate laws of the corporation. Only the corporate common shareholders do. Okay? And I'm taking my property tax bill, and I'm writing on it forward to the trustee. I'm, I'm no longer the trustee. No, you are the trustee, you are the elector, and you order them to settle it. You come in and you're voting for them to set that charge off. Dissipate it. Take it to ground. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah, you want a new vehicle. You basically get the invoice and you send it to the Secretary of the Treasury and you say, I am a United States elector and I want this vehicle. Here is the invoice. You make it happen. That sounds pretty cool. Yeah. I have another question. There was a, a public statutory law we were supposed to read. I know I didn't read that yet. I was planning on reading it. Is, is that it was um, public law or public statute number one, and then it was sections like 417 or something? Do you remember that, Thomas? Uh, there's, there's a whole lot of them, the first volume that we've been using. Yeah. That government actor, he's, he's probably not going to have a job. It's listed in the file section, though, isn't it? That was that what? that law we were supposed to read. 
Well, I don't remember telling you any law that you needed yeah. to read. Oh, okay. I told you to read the Constitution. Yeah. Okay? I told you about the bankruptcy laws, okay? Right. And you can go in and verify those. You can pull those up. Statutes of large. Oh, yeah, that was uh, 617, 615 yeah. and 17 or something. Well, there was the Expatriation Act, and basically when you vote, uh, yeah. To not be a debtor any longer, you're expatriating away from being a debtor. Yeah. That's the expatriation you're doing. Okay, so we it's a self-proclaiming expatriation in the process. Right. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Talk to you guys later. Okay. Bye. Thank you, Pat. Thanks, Patrick. Yep. Good night. Good night.